Kaklo is um, head of legal affairs of the National Democratic Congress. You're welcome to Eyewitness News. Eh? Omaru. Good evening and good evening to your listeners. Good evening to you, Council. Um, your party called a press conference. You made so much noise about the Richard Jackpot tip. You played the 16 minute tip. We played it here on our network. You gave us an assurance that it was the last nail that will be used in destroying the Attorney General Godfrey Diabu Adami. Today he's in the UK and he says he was much ado about nothing and that when he came to it in court during cross-examination within two days, he demolished your witness or the person who you were relying on who did the recording to be the one who destroyed the AG. What's your comment? Okay, so Omaru, just for the record, from the time we set up this current constitutional arrangement, no attorney general has been strongly advised by a sitting high court judge, in fact, a court of appeal judge with additional high court responsibility. No attorney general has gone, gone through such a situation. What exactly are the issues? The National Democratic Congress, led by its national chairman, organized a press conference. And in this press conference, a 15-minute audio record was played. Right Now, immediately after this, the MPP also organized a press conference, led by its the chair of this constitutional and legal committee, Mr. Frantini, what was their response? That the audio recording played by the national chairman is doctored, pieced together. Now, one would expect that having made a categorical statement that the audio recording is doctored, that is fictitious, is of dubious validity. When you get the benefit in court, you cover the same reason. Now, the lawyer for Mr. Atufos, the doctor, decided to have this audio recorded, tended to Mr. Richard Jaffa in the ongoing trial. That day, the director of public prosecution objected to the admissibility of this audio recording. The director of public prosecution objected to this tendry on three grounds. One, that insufficient foundation has not uh, or insufficient you know, foundation. Two, that it was not relevant. Three, that the audio recording was done in violation of the attorney general right guaranteed under Article 82. Nowhere in the objection of the Leonard DPP. Did she say that one, the voice on the recording is not that of Mr. Goffet Yebuatame? Nowhere did the DPP say that the audio recording, for whatever it's worth, is doctored or pieced together. So now, between the national chairman of the NDC, who led the press conference, and my learned senior, from David, who said the audio recording is doctor? Who should be called in the words of Goffrey Dami as lying? He, Mr. Goffrey Dami, have had the benefit of obviously having ignored the wise counsel of the learned trial judge, at least to abstain from the trial. He still came when the objection was taken. He had the benefit of telling the DPP that, hey, that, that is not my voice. 
said that the representations on the audio recordings are doctored. None of these two featured in the objection raised in court. Suffice to say that the learned trial judge in her wisdom admitted the audio record. Which judge would admit a doctored case in evidence? Which judge would do that? You see, there is this street conversation that you can't shame the shameless. Hmm? You can't shame the shameless. If Mr. Godfrey de Wadami has any scintilla or any understanding of what shame is, he will not be talking in landing on this matter. In fact, he should be the one calling for a truce. The case that is ongoing now, it is no, it looks like it is Godfrey Dami who is on trial. I mean, nobody. I mean, look, if you listen to the testimony in court, and I've always maintained, Umaru, if you're a man, hmm, what you do is that you take the witness stand and you swear an oath that you tell the truth, the whole truth. Certainly, Mr. Godfrey Dami is a coward. He is afraid. He is afraid of perjury. Because he is not certain what more Richard Jaffa has on him. I will use your platform hmm, to tell him that the national chairman of the NDC in the person of Johnson as he do think. Is a very methodical person. And I remember the day when this same issue came. He said, listen, I want all the necessary authentication be done. I want to see transcripts of it. The University of Ghana did transcribe everything. He went through himself, satisfied himself of the validity and how authentic the audio recording is before he put his face to it. So when I heard my senior friend David made that comment, I laughed. I said, senior, you can't defend this without degrading yourself. And lo and behold, today as we speak, Mr. Dami is saying that something is happening in court. I think you can go to London and make those kind of comments. <laughs> At least those who are in London with, with respect may not have the full benefit of, 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 of the record of the court. Please, he should, he should, he should disengage. He should disengage. But the attorney general is still cross-examining Richard Jaffa. Let's see how it is. And I'm really, really, really surprised that the Attorney General will sit somewhere in London and say, <laughs> under cross-examination, uh, whatever has been exposed to be like. Seriously? So when he and Richard Jaffa, on the night of 25th March, 2024, met in the house of the respected Supreme Court judge. Is he saying that is also a lie? Look, if Mr. Godfrey de Adame has any appreciation of professional misconduct, this is one. Omaru, you must always appreciate that an accused person is a vulnerable person. And that is why you will notice that in the professional rules and the, the, the etiquette rules for lawyers, conversation with, in this specific case, an accused person is forbidden. The reason is simple. An accused person is a vulnerable person. 
An accused person is like a person with a sword of Damocles hanging over his neck. And so, therefore, there's always a higher probability or even possibility that any offer made to him, he will easily take it. And that is why communication with an accused person must be done through the lawyer. When Mr. Godfrey the Abadami met with Jaffa, and in fact, on the name of April, when he called him in the morning, the basis of that 16 minutes audio conversation, Mr. Tadosori had appeared in court on the 26th day of March 2024. So, based on this timeline, Mr. Godfrey then knows that he was engaged in professional misconduct. In fact, if you listen to the audio, he himself came to the point where he said, mm, Richard, I hope nobody is recording. If the attorney general was doing what is right, why was he worried as to whether anybody was recording him or not? This bravery from a safe distance to be dismissed with alacrity. You leave Ghana, you go to London, and now start making noise. If he's a man, nothing precludes him from taking the witness stand that I am a man, I am Godfrey Diebu Adami, the leader of the bar, the attorney of the republic. I am taking the witness stand in any case, in any case, you have not disputed that there was a meeting between your good self, Richie Dapa, and the respected justice of the Supreme Court. You have not denied it. So my question to him, in the absence of any denial on oath from him, which of these stories should be believed? In any case, which is that is under oath. He is testifying under oath at the risk of perjury. The one who cannot master the necessary courage to take the oath is rather out there in London blabbing. Please. My question to you would be, since you introduced this audio in the public and succeeded in getting it accepted in the court, how has it helped your case? Thankfully, thankfully, the skill set I have does not permit me to do what you call what we to place on a testimony or not. My work as defense attorney in this matter is to introduce the evidence and establish the materiality with the issues in contention. As to what weight, what inferences to be drawn, that is exclusively reserved for the trial judge. At this point, I must say, I do not have the necessary skill set, the necessary competence to do that inferential exercise. That's for the judge exclusively. I can only persuade by way of what the nature of the evidence that I have done. The rest is for the judge to do. Very well. There's another... I, I, do not, I, I do not know that Mr. Godfrey Dami, right, <laughs> has the capacity, as you testify, as Mr. Zappa is still in the witness box, to give conclusive as to how the mind of the judge will be. How he came by that, whether by clairvoyance or anything, I do not know. And I want to leave him uh, to double in, 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 in that realm. But the national chairman of the NDC did a press conference, played the audio. That audio was taken to court. The objections that were taken had nothing to do with a claim by the NTP that it was doctored. Look, in any serious democracy, what 
you media people should be doing. It should be calling my learning senior from Davis and persons who, as it were, related this narrative. That in the face of this audio having been admitted, do you still stand by your claim that it was doctor? That is what you do. There must be a certain level of accountability even to us who speak through your media. I'm sure that significantly appears to be a failure. If not, if not, why would you even want to do that? Finally, uh, there's this issue about your side presenting a WhatsApp chat that Richie Jackpa had with the Attorney General and that you sent only the part that serves your purpose. And there was a whole debate in the courtroom on whether or not the whole WhatsApp chat should be admitted. It turns out there were, what, 66 messages and you sent only two? Uh, disingenuous or a strategy? First of all, the NDC and the is that unlike the claim by the MPP, and in fact, Assassin Radio, Assassin Online, and Co., that Godfrey Dami was entrapped, entrapped by a justice of the Supreme Court. We needed to show by way of the WhatsApp chat the direct connection that the person who said, I shall arrange through your cousin was not Japa, but Kofedami. That was a chat by way of the WhatsApp that was materially delayed to establish that particular claim. Nothing more, nothing else. In the court, the attorney general decided to produce a basis in something chat. Which is about says what? The chat, it doesn't look like that's the number. That's between the two of them. These are not my chat. But at least we have shown a chat that establishes clearly, and the attorney general has not denied it, that he sent a chat to Richard Jaffa telling him that you were arranged to his car. How, therefore, can you arrange something through someone and turn around and say you have been entrapped? This cock and bull story. What decent democracy would tolerate this gross misconduct? If the next thing was jurisdiction, the attorney general by now should be going to serious professional investors. Look, and you see, sometimes we look at some of these things and we just brush. I am sure if Edigi is the one who has conducted himself or misconducted himself in this manner. Hmm? You would have heard some civil lawyer. This is unbecoming. This is unprofessional. This is gross misconduct. But because it's the attorney general, moral voices are quiet. They are quiet. Is it not strange, woman? Is it not so strange? That in all of this, the Ghana Bar Association is quiet. It's like nothing has happened. Posterity is waiting for all of us. I thought the last and time. You with us regrettably harshly, Omar. I thought the last time there was a suggestion that there's an NDC Bar Association and then the Ghana Bar Association. Uh, when you met with the former president, was it in the central region? It was suggested that there, there are members of the Ghana Bar who are aligned towards the NDC. Um, is that is that like a serious thing or was this a conversation made in jest? And perhaps could that association then take up the call for what you are demanding? The last time, the last time I checked, the 1992 constitution guarantees freedom of association. Anybody, anybody who has any sympathy for the NDC has the constitutionally guaranteed right 
to associate with it in any form or shape. In any case, the NDC, having been so registered under the Political Parties Act and the laws of this Republic of Ghana, permits our members to form any form of association. So, if you're a medical doctor associated with the NDC, you are permitted to form an association to champion the cause of the party. That same thing reflects with lawyers associated with it. So if you have heard something like that, you have heard right, Omaru. Let's leave it here. Thank you for speaking to us, sir. I appreciate the opportunity, sir. That's